Reality just broke its own rules. The 2025 Nobel Prize in Physics didn't honor a new particle or a massive telescope. It honored something far stranger. Proof that the universe itself is quantum to the core. For a century, scientists tried to tame the bizarre logic of quantum mechanics, entanglement, superposition, particles existing in two places at once. But this year, three physicists went further. They've shown that the universe doesn't just behave quantumly, it is quantum. And that means everything we see, space, time, even cause and effect, may be illusions built from probability. To understand their discovery, we need to revisit one of the strangest truths in physics. An electron isn't a tiny ball orbiting a nucleus, it exists as a wave of probabilities, a cloud of potential locations and energies. Before you measure it, the electron is everywhere it could possibly be. It's not that we don't know where it is, it genuinely doesn't have a definite position. Scientists describe this wave using what's called a wave function, a mathematical tool that tells us the likelihood of finding the electron at a certain place and time. But here's the twist, the moment we look for it, that wave suddenly collapses into one single outcome. The haze turns into a point. Observation forces the universe to choose. For decades, this strange duality between wave and particle seemed confined to the atomic scale. It was the weird behavior of the very small, invisible to our senses, hidden in equations. But in 2025, the Nobel-winning experiments showed something chilling. This same quantum dance governs even systems large enough to see with your eyes. Let's step in deeper. When you look at an atom, what you're really seeing is energy trapped in standing waves, like ripples in a pond that never fade. Each possible energy level isn't a layer or orbit, it's a unique shape of that wave function. In its lowest state, the wave is small and compact, surrounding the nucleus like a glowing sphere. Give it energy and it stretches, reshaping into more complex forms, lobes, nodes, patterns that pulse through empty space. These shapes, known as orbitals, are like nature's musical harmonies. Each is a stable rhythm of probability, perfectly tuned to the atom's internal field. No motion, no orbits, only patterns of existence, shifting with energy. But what happens when that delicate pattern meets a wall, a barrier it shouldn't cross? Classical physics says if a ball doesn't have enough energy to climb a hill, it will stop. Quantum mechanics says the ball can disappear on one side and reappear on the other without ever going over. This is quantum tunneling. It's one of the strangest phenomenon in all of physics. An electron trapped inside an atom doesn't stay perfectly confined. A tiny part of its wave function seeps beyond the barrier, like a ghost slipping through walls. That faint possibility, that leakage of probability, it's not just theoretical, it's real. It's the mechanism that drives nuclear fusion in stars, the decay of radioactive atoms, and even the modern microchips inside your phone. But until recently, scientists couldn't harness this effect on a scale larger than a single atom. That changed when Clark, Deverett, and Martinus began designing devices that could control tunneling itself. Their tool of choice? A tiny, almost invisible structure called a Josephine junction. Imagine two superconductors, materials that let electrons flow without resistance, separated by a whisper-thin layer of insulator. Classically, no current should pass through that barrier, but quantum mechanics disagrees. In superconductors, electrons don't move individually. They form Cooper pairs, linked twins, that act as a single quantum wave. This collective wave can tunnel right through the insulating barrier, connecting both sides in perfect coherence. The result is a quantum system that behaves like a single, unified entity, a macroscopic wave of millions of electrons, oscillating in harmony. What Clark Deverett and Martinus proved is that this wave isn't a metaphor. It's measurable, controllable, and most importantly, quantum. By using Josephus junctions, they created circuits that behave just like atoms, absorbing and emitting energy in discrete amounts. But these aren't atoms made of protons and electrons. They're artificial atoms engineered on silicon chips, yet governed by the same quantum laws that rule the universe. 
Inside a Josephson junction, the superconducting current can occupy different energy states, each with its own wave shape, just like an electron in an atom. At low energy, the wave sits quietly at the bottom of its potential well. Add energy through a carefully tuned microwave pulse and the wave stretches, reshaping into higher levels. In the lowest state, it can represent a zero, in the next, a one. But here's where quantum reality gets weird. The wave doesn't have to choose between them. It can exist in both states at once, a phenomenon called superposition. That single Josephson junction becomes a qubit, the fundamental building block of a quantum computer. By controlling the wave's energy and phase, scientists can store, manipulate, and read information not as bits, but as probabilities. And because the state exists across multiple realities simultaneously, computations that would take classical supercomputers thousands of years can, in theory, be done in seconds. This is how quantum tunneling, once a mysterious glitch of nature, became the beating heart of the next technological revolution. For decades, physicists debated a profound question. Is quantum mechanics just a rule for the microscopic world, or is it the rule of everything? Clark, Deverett, and Martinus answered that question through precision experiments. They showed that even a circuit containing billions of electrons, visible under a microscope, can behave according to quantum laws. They demonstrated quantum coherence, where all those particles share one unified wave function across entire devices. These circuits absorbed and emitted photons in quantized packets, displayed tunneling behavior, and could even exist in superposed energy states. In essence, they became tangible proof that the boundary between the quantum and classical worlds is not physical, it's psychological. The universe doesn't switch between quantum and classical, it's quantum all the way up. Their work bridges two realms, turning quantum theory from an abstract mystery into an engineered reality. The artificial atoms they built are now at the heart of superconducting quantum processors, machines capable of storing quantum information, performing entanglement operations, and pushing humanity toward a new era of computation. With these discoveries, a new picture of the universe emerges, one where everything is fundamentally a wave. Matter, light, time, even space itself, all vibrating patterns of probability. Every interaction, every observation, every flash of reality we experience is the universe collapsing one of its infinite quantum possibilities into a single outcome. The work of the 2025 Nobel laureates brings us closer to understanding this hidden structure. By engineering quantum states, we can see, manipulate, and measure. They've proven that the weirdness of quantum physics isn't confined to laboratories, it's embedded in the logic of existence itself. Their experiments link cosmic-scale process with quantum foundations, showing that even gravity might emerge from entanglement. Using ultra-cold atoms and superconducting qubits, they recreated conditions that mimic the birth of the cosmos when quantum fluctuations froze into matter and light. They demonstrated that space-time itself may arise from a web of quantum information, where distance and geometry are not fundamental, but emergent. This means the universe isn't built from particles, but from relationships, connections that stretch across light years woven by the mathematics of entanglement. Our reality, from the birth of stars to the thoughts in your brain, follows the same invisible rhythm. Quantum mechanics isn't the exception to the universe, it is the universe. The implications are staggering. Superconducting qubits, the very devices born from these Nobel-winning experiments, now form the backbone of quantum computers, built by companies like IBM, Google, and Rigetti. These machines are beginning to tackle problems no classical supercomputer can approach, from simulating molecules for new medicines to decrypting complex codes and modeling cosmic phenomena. But beyond the technology lies something deeper. The work of Clark, Deverett, and Martinez doesn't just build machines, it builds meaning. It tells us that every solid thing, every real object is just a quantum field, vibrating, interacting, tunneling that we too are made of superpositions and probabilities, that reality itself may only exist when observed, and maybe, just maybe, the universe is watching itself through us.
In awarding the 2025 Nobel Prize in Physics, the Royal Swedish Academy didn't just honor three scientists. They honored a shift in human understanding, a moment when we finally realized that the universe doesn't just obey quantum laws. It is quantum. From the faint shimmer of an electron cloud to the macroscopic hum of a superconducting circuit, the same mysterious rules apply. We have built artificial atoms, coaxed waves of probability into existence, and watched as matter and energy blurred into one. The classical world was always an illusion, a comforting projection of quantum chaos beneath. And as these scientists proved, the deeper we look, the more the universe whispers the same truth. Everything, everywhere is quantum. And if you like everything quantum, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.